And I wanted to welcome you to our TAPS quarterly webinar. And we have a really great agenda planned for you on building relationships to support change. And just a few guidelines while we're uh, talking. Um, the call is going to be, we're asking everyone to mute the call during the presentation. We didn't actually mute everyone this time. Uh, we can take questions if you can chat them, you know, type them into your chat box and uh, we can either answer them at the end of each presentation or if it makes more sense, we'll address them at the end. There will be a webinar evaluation for you to respond to at the closing. And just so you know that the, this webinar is being recorded and it will be posted for later reference on our TAP resource website. Oh yeah. So let me give you an overview of today's webinar. Uh, my name is Heather Reed and I work with the California Department of Education as one of the agencies for the Smarter Lunchroom Movement of California. And I'll be doing a brief overview of what's new for Smarter Lunchrooms Movement of California. Then we're going to have a showcase on building relationships and um, Candace Baines. Baines, yes, thank you, from the Dairy Council of California and Chelsea Slattery from UC Cal Fresh and Tracy Conkey from the Dairy Council of California will be sharing some of their strategies and tips for building those great relationships with food service directors and making changes in the cafeteria. And then we're going to end with uh, a re review of some of the tools for success that we have online that Marianne Mills, who's our uh, representative from UC Cal Fresh for uh, the Smarter Lunchroom Movement of California, and she's going to be sharing these resources and tools that will make your job a little easier. So our objective today is to have you be able to describe what's going on in the upcoming activities for the Smarter Lunchroom Movement for the next year. And then also for you to understand you know, some of the strategies that work to provide support to schools. And also how to identify these great online training tools and how to enter data, which helps us to build this body of knowledge that we can share out the success for Smarter Lunchroom. So this, this part will share some of what's going on. In and to remind some of you that have been participating as TAPS for a while and for the new folks, our delivery model is that we have a collaborative comprised a, a number of agencies statewide who oversee uh, the Smarter Lunchroom Movement of California. And as a collaborative, we provide training, we provide uh, technical advising through our TAPS system, and then we also promote the success of Smarter Lunchroom through conferences, our monthly nudge newsletter, and a variety of other venues, including the best practices that you share. And our overall goal is that all students would be eating healthy foods. In the last two years that we've been working as a collaborative, we've really had a huge reach. And I think the numbers are probably even higher than are reflected on this map. We have reached about 25% of the 1,000 school districts that we have in California and over uh, 59 trainings just through the collaborative. I heard recently, I mean, we have 2,500 attendees at these uh, workshops, but I heard recently that we've trained over 500 frontline staff through the TAPS efforts, which is amazing and really helpful. We've done a lot of conference presentations, uh, these webinars and poster presentations. There's articles that have shared some of the best practices that you've been instrumental in making happen. Uh, we had food service director kits given out, and then we have about 75 folks that are on the pathway to becoming TAPS. And as a collaborative, we're doing some strategic planning to gear up for the next three years. In this picture, you see uh, Lynn Brock, who facilitated our collaborative strategic planning meeting. She used this wonderful treasure hunt theme so that we could chart our course and map out what we're going to be doing. We also see Mary Ann Mills and I think Jackie Richardson from CDPH as well as I think Deborah Tamanayi from the And we'll be have, we're meeting again in October to discuss the strategic plan and finalize it. And at that point, we'll share out some relevant points probably in the next webinar. You can look forward to, though, more training on Smarter Lunchroom Movement. We are going to be continuing um, one-day workshops on the principles and practices, and that's led by our team of Marianne Mills, Candace Sands, and Jennifer Esparzo. And they've already scheduled uh, four workshops, definitely, and the fifth is in progress. 
going to have them in Ontario, Bakersfield, Salinas, Livermore, and Chico during the first two weeks of March in 2016. And also, we're very excited uh, that we've received funding from Team Nutrition Grants. The CDE applied for this funding to USDA uh, with the support of the Smarter Lunchroom Movement of California. And we were one of 19 states uh, that received this funding. And what we're going to be doing is turning around and giving this money out to schools. We're, we plan to fund 25 school districts who would implement in two schools for a total of 50 schools that would be part of this whole cohort. And they'll get about $14,000. And one of our goals are to train the food service directors, cafeteria managers, and frontline staff um, in how to implement Smarter Lunchroom, have them evaluate it, and also, more importantly, to connect the Smarter Lunchroom, what's happening in the cafeteria, to the classroom, and then to really solidify our great TAP support system. So we expect that the RFA, which will be a competitive bid, is going out the first week of November. We expect to award the grants in early spring, and then we'll have a project kickoff in May of 2016. So if you know of agencies uh, that you've been working with that you think would be good candidates, I would encourage you to help them uh, apply for this team nutrition grant. And that is kind of the news from Lake Wobegon. And uh, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to um, hearing about TAP's success with relationship building. OK, great. Thanks, Teta. This is Candace from Dairy Council of California. And I'm excited to have Chelsea Flattery, who is a community education specialist from UC CalFresh, as well as Tracy Conkey, who is a community nutrition advisor for Dairy Council of California. They will be sharing their successes on building relationships. And we have asked them to share how they identified their partners, how did they establish relationships with them, um, what their process was for getting their partner on board, um, what was their shared work and their outcomes. So we're really excited to have them. All right, so we're Chelsea will be presenting first. OK, so as Candace said, my name is Chelsea, and I'm a community <coughs> education specialist with the UC CalFresh Nutrition Program in the um, Butte County Cluster specifically. Today we're going to be focusing on some of the strategies that we've been implementing in Yuba County. So um, first of all, I just want to talk a little bit about um, the process that we went through with identifying partners in Yuba County. And um, that all began with um, attending some meetings. So the CNAP meetings were the very first meetings that I at first attended where we were able to identify some partners. Um, at that meeting, I connected with L Leslie Pring from the Dairy Council of California. And um, together, her and I decided that we really wanted to help Marysville um, with establishing a wellness committee. And so from there, we identified who the food service director was. And uh, her and I set up a meeting with Amber Watson, who is the food service director for Marysville Joint Unified School District. And um, upon meeting with her, we found out that that was something that she had already had in mind for the last school year. So um, we made that connection with her. We found out what it was that she was working on and what we could do to help. And together, we were able to put together a team and um, we started meeting last school year with a very large um, district-wide wellness uh, policy committee. So um, again, with establishing those relationships, the CNAP meetings were very important for sharing information. Um, the school wellness committee meetings were pretty much where everything came together and where we all were able to collaborate and figure out what we wanted to work towards. And then. Um, Making regular visits to cafeterias was something that I started out with, with establishing these relationships, um, just going into the cafeterias, introducing myself, letting them know um, where I worked. And a lot of times, I would just go in and bring um, some sort of incentive or a poster for them to hang into their cafeteria. And this was before even mentioning anything about the Smarter Lunchroom. And um, upon those meetings, we were able to identify some goals with some of the cafeteria managers. Uh, figure out what it was that they wanted, what we could do to help, to make them happier, to make their cafeteria uh, more friendly, and to get the students excited about coming in there. 
So the key partners for Yuba County with the Marysville Joint Unified School District was um, definitely the food service director. That was our um, main partner, and then Rose, or that's Amber Watson, and then Rose Hall, who is the nutrition services support specialist that works right alongside Amber Watson. And then Leslie Pring, the Community Nutrition Advisor for Dairy Council, who is also a TAPS provider. And then myself and um, the Marysville Cafeteria Managers. So our process for getting partners on board with Smarter Lunchrooms, the way that we went about this in Yuba County was that we decided to put together Smarter Lunchrooms training. And um, we invited food service directors, food service staff, we invited cafeteria managers from throughout the school district, and then we also invited community partners and we were able to promote this training through the wellness meetings and the CNAP meetings. And at this training we were able to identify some goals and um, some changes that the cafeteria managers were wanting to make and what their challenges were. So the shared work between um, all of us who are collaborating to work towards the Smarter Lunchrooms movement in Marysville School District is um, attending the collaborative meetings to make sure that we're sharing the information um, and then conducting trainings. And so one thing that we've done in Marysville is offered no time to train um, meeting or um, trainings at the meetings with the cafeteria managers. They have 19 cafeteria yeah. managers that attend these monthly meetings. And I've also provided the food service director with a no time to train manual of her own so that if um, Leslie Pring or myself is not able to do the training, she can conduct the training on her own and just incorporate those into her monthly meetings. And then um, I also send out monthly emails to the food service staff, so that email goes out to all 19 of the cafeteria managers. And in those emails, we instruct them what to do with their, um, their school lunchroom. And I'll, I'll get more into that when we talk about that in our next few slides. And with those emails, it's really nice to have, um, not only do I send them out, but Amber Watson also responds in those and reinforces what I say in the email so that it's coming from the top down. It's not just coming from me. And so um, that's the accountability there. Um, there's a lot of accountability that goes in to the partnership that we have with the food service and also with um, the TAPS providers and just making sure that we're following up with the food service director and that we're staying in communication constantly. Um, and then oh, also with the monthly school lunch menus, the um, Marysville Unified incorporates some of our messaging that we um, do in the cafeterias into each month's school lunch menu. And so we've decided with our um, action plan for this school year, the 2015-16 school year, is um, we have expanded the Smarter Lunchrooms movement from one school in Marysville Unified School District to 19 schools. We've developed monthly themes for the school lunchrooms throughout the school year, and then we also decided to create and distribute Smarter Lunchroom kits for all schools in the district. So in these kits, um, some of the things that were included were creative name labels. So you'll see those on the right of the screen there, the yellow and green. So each cafeteria has a salad bar currently, so there were 19 sets of the creative um, name labels that went out to each school. There's also some customized school lunch hero signs, and this is something that the food service director, Amber Watson, came up with. And so they will put the... Um, food service workers name in there and so that helps the students to familiarize themselves with the workers in the cafeteria and know them by their name. And then we also provided some talking points um, with questions and facts for the cafeteria staff to support the monthly themes. So each um, month they get a different poster to go along with the themes. For example, in August our monthly theme was My Plate. And so they have a um, set of talking points based around the My Plate, some questions to ask the students to get them engaged and make them aware of what the monthly theme is. And then there's also some point of sale signs. So in the um, Marysville School District, there's 19 sites, but between those 19 sites, there's 41 points of sale. So each point of sale will have, if you see on the very left, the My Plate month um, sign there, that is a point of sale sign that went on each point of sale location throughout the district. And then some of our outcomes that we have been able to see so far is um, there's 19 different schools in Yuba County that are implementing the Smarter Lunchroom um, kits that we've delivered. And so um, by doing that, they're able to deliver consistent messaging to nearly 9,650 students. 
And then this is just some of the outcomes from one site in particular. Um, I believe it's Johnson Park Elementary. So this shows that just by moving the white milk to a different location, um, making it a little bit more available than the chocolate milk, it increased the numbers of so servings and it actually doubled their sales of white milk. And then with the fruit, they increased the fruit displays by um, one thing that they did, for example, was they put it in a colorful bowl and then added a little sign that said banana phones and put the um, bananas into the bucket and then they, all the kids were acting like they were talking on their banana phones and just small things like that really helped to increase the score. So here you'll see there's a 44% increase in their fruit sales. And then um, establishing our relationships with partners and providing training to the food service staff and implementing these Smarter Lunchroom strategies, there was a 69% increase in reimbursable meal sales. So our next steps that we plan to do collaboratively is um, to continue these No Time to Train trainings at the cafeteria manager meetings, also to do some follow-up visits to school sites and um, just help to reinforce the messaging that we're sending out in those monthly emails and make sure that the cafeteria staff are putting their posters up each month and um, having um, the food labels on the salad bars and things like that. And then um, the continued communication and support. So we're going to keep offering that to the um, food service staff and then we hope that they'll continue to communicate with us and provide us with um, one thing that their food service director does is send us photos of some of the things that are being implemented in these cafeterias. So it's really neat to see what's going on and that um, it's actually making a difference. In the, cafeterias, and then we're going to continue to do the Smarter Lunchroom scorecards at some of the school sites in Marysville. And then, of course, um, always taking pictures before and after pictures. We always want to hear about what everybody's doing, but it's also really nice to see it, too. Great. Chelsea, that was wonderful. Thank you. I, one of the things that, I've, that stood out for me was when you said, being in constant communication with your partners um, when using like monthly themes and kits, those were all gaps that they really needed and it seemed like it was just such a wonderful success. And it was nice to see that you utilized Dairy Council and Dairy Council was able to work with you as well. And so there's just no way that we can um, do as much as we can without the wonderful partnership. And so it seems like it really paid off for the students. So thank you so much. Next, we have Tracy Conkey from Community, sorry, from Dairy Council of California. She's a community nutrition advisor, and she's going to be sharing her successes at Washington Middle School. Hi, good morning. Thank you, Candace. Um, yeah, I'm going to be sharing a story about a partnership that I have with Orange County Department of Education and the successes that we've had so far, and the ones that we hope to have coming or moving forward. So our partnership really started um, naturally. I was attending a La Habra City School District uh, Wellness Council meeting, and when it came to partner announcements, I uh, explained that we were working on Smarter Lunchrooms movement, and I gave a brief introduction to it and mentioned that we're looking for schools to partner with, and so there was quite a bit of interest within that council meeting. And so we decided to have a sidebar, a sidebar conversation after the meeting to just save time. And so after the meeting, we met with this, I met with the school food service director, the leader of um, coordinated school health at the district, and then Carrie Tuggle, who's with Orange County Department of Education, joined in our conversation. And she was also went through TAPS training. So we just looked at each other, and it was no question. It was just we automatically knew we were going to be partnering. Um, on a project with Smarter Lunchrooms with La Habra City. And so um, based on Mike's feedback and Helen's feedback, the school food service director and the wellness lead, um, we decided to work with Washington Middle School, and that was where they wanted the attention to be. So we set up a date uh, for the site visit, and we went to the school well ahead of service so that we can have a meeting with quite a few people. And um, you'll see on the list uh, coming up that um, we had a lot of players within this meeting. So our ultimate goal was to make a positive impact and to put systems in place that would lead this project to a sustainable place. So as you can see by this list that I've outlined, we have a lot of great minds at the table, and we were really able to pull together a plan that would meet everyone's needs. And each person on this list um, has really played an invaluable role in implementing change through Smarter Lunchrooms. So I'll highlight those roles that were played um, through uh, future slides, but um, one of the things that I really found partnering with 
uh, Orange County Department of Education and Carrie Tuggle is that we were able to plan behind the scenes. So the two of us had several debriefs and came up with suggestions based on goals that were set along with the um, results of the scorecard that we received from our observations. And so after we had a game plan in mind, we would then meet with the district and school contacts to provide them with options to choose from. So it worked out really smoothly, and we saved everyone a lot of time by consolidating our communication. And so this is just a sample work plan that we came up with um, after one of our meetings. And you can see under the responsibility that we really try to divide and conquer. And um, the reason why you don't see any deadlines listed is because we all have the same deadline uh, prior to our next meeting. And so um, another thing that we found that was really helpful for accountability is that in addition to the work plan, um, by the end of every meeting, we already had another meeting marked on our calendar. So that way, we were able to keep our progress moving forward. So you can see here in this picture, I have a before picture on the left and an after picture on the right. And um, I just want you to kind of think to yourselves if you can identify any areas in the before picture on the left that you would make changes to. And, um, and then I'll go through and walk you through right now about what we actually did. So you can see. Um, yeah, I'm just going to interrupt you really quickly, but we're still hearing some background noise. It sounds like some people are typing. So if you could please make sure that your phones are muted, that would be very helpful. Thank you. So you can see on the left that um, they have pennants hanging on the, the wall, and they also have a bunch of T-shirts on the right-hand side of the wall, and. Um, it doesn't look like a cafeteria. This is um, the service areas is in a huge multi-purpose room, and so it's just one big square. And you can see that there's um, the milk cooler on the left-hand side, and that's well out of the service line. In fact, there's no actual indication of where students should be walking to to get their food. And so we made quite a bit of changes. Um, the main goal that everyone on our team wanted to focus on was aesthetics and ambiance, and really turning this into a um, a location that looks like a cafe, feels like a cafe, and then it's obvious that meals are served there. So you can see on the right-hand side, um, I don't, hopefully you can see the glossy blue where we hung up posters. And so that's where Dan, the, uh, Dan, the maintenance and facilities man, uh, actually repainted all of the walls for us. They already had paint on hand. The school colors are red, white, and blue. So it was convenient that there was no additional cost for that. And then Helen purchased additional salad bars. The entree salad bar was uh, originally over where the milk cooler was on the left-hand side. So most of the students ended up bypassing that and just going straight to the entree window service line. Um, April, the cafeteria lead manager, she went out and bought red fabric and pleated it and hung up uh, point of sale skirts to go um, over the table. And then Helen also purchased a mini board. And it's hard to tell in that picture, but it looks like kind of chalkboard. But what we actually did was we printed out and laminated uh, the different menu offerings that they have for each day. And then we velcro them to the board. So now April and her staff only have to unvelcro and velcro the day's special back up there. So it looks really clean and really nice um, with that as well. So you know, the, the focus of Smart Lunchrooms is really on no cost, low cost. And this school wanted to go quite a bit beyond that. And so Mike looked into finding funds from Eagle Scouts and getting labor and work for, um, from them. We were talking about going to Home Depot or Lowe's and asking for supplies to help build awnings. Some of those did not work out. Um, but we, so things got put on hold a little bit. But we came back around and we found other sources of funding, which I'll uh, tell you about in a few more slides. So this is just a different view. You can see the milk cooler. We now moved it over to the entrance. So now all students have to pass by the milk cooler. doesn't mean they have to take a milk, but it in increases the opportunity and the probability that they will select milk. And then with a the new purchase salad bar, we have the entree salad placed there along with some um, other fruit and vegetable offerings. And it leads them directly to the hot entree window now. So there's a um, consistent flow for students to go through. And then I created a couple diagrams that I just wanted to give you a better overview because it's such a large room that we work with. The students originally would just come in and go to two point of sales, and then 
they would tend to go directly just to the entree window and bypass the milk, cooler, and salads, which is what I was trying to explain in the previous slide. And so what we've done is we uh, moved the milk cooler by the front entrance, we added the mini board by the point of sale, and then they go directly down either side of the salad bar to the entrees, and then they purchase a second salad bar that has additional um, second offerings for fruits, vegetables, and milk as well. And then they exit and go out into the dining area. And so we actually accomplished a lot of things last year with minimal funding. Um, we were lucky that School Food Service had a little bit of money in their budget to purchase the salad bars and the mini boards. Um, but behind all of that, while we were working more on the ambience of the service area, we also had um, Darcy from Orange County Department of Education. I wanted to give a shout out to her. She's um, our evaluation specialist on our team, and she was collecting um, student surveys. And we're going to be looking at that data and incorporating their feedback into next steps. Um, but we were lucky. Uh, this past summer, we applied for Field to Say 60 funding, and we received almost up to $4,000. So we're going to be implementing some new um, layers to the look of the cafeteria. We're going to be purchasing awnings to go over the service windows. And we're going to be holding, we're actually currently holding a student contest uh, for a mural design that will go out in the actual dining area outside. And uh, with the help of the principal, Dr. Carlos, uh, his wife is an artist, so she'll be partnering with the students to actually paint the mural with them on the wall outside. And um, we're going to be incorporating some nutrition education. Uh, they'll be doing Harvest of the Month in their sixth grade exploratory classes and then exercise your options in uh, their PE classes for seventh and eighth grade. And it's a PBS, PBIS school, so they're really focused on student-led learning. So we'll be having them um, do student projects around marketing and promotion of the meals program as well as uh, nutrition education. And they're going to be including a new um, field hockey um, team at their school to increase another point for physical activity. So we've been able to accomplish quite a bit, and we're really looking forward to seeing our impact for this year as well. And um, one other just great thing about the partnership is that it went so smoothly that uh, with Orange County Department of Education that we'll also be working on Smarter Lunchrooms in about three or four other districts as well now. We'll be expanding to that. Tracy, thank you so much. That I just, The entire time I was thinking whole comprehensive strategies on so many levels, and I really like that. Um, you shared in the very beginning, and there's a lot of great minds together and looking at that workload. Um, I'm impressed that everyone shared the same amount of work and, and carried through with that. So um, what a great example of healthy relationships. Thank you. So now um, we are going to turn on to our poll. The question is, based on what you've heard from our featured TAP, which strategies do you plan to utilize in your Smarter Lunchroom implementation? So we're going to go ahead and do a poll on that. So go ahead and select the strategy or strategies that you plan to utilize based on what was presented today. You can click more than one option. I'll give you guys just about one more minute. Okay, so it looks like majority of you, about 70% of you feel strongly about developing an action plan, which is great. Um, and it looks like everyone, you know, definitely sees the other options, new partners and shared work as important as well. Um, it looks like it grew a little bit with action plans. So great. We're glad to see that, that you have seen that in our presentations and that you might use that in the future. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. Great. So we have Mary Ann Mills from UC Cal Fresh, and she is going to share with us some tools for success. So I'm excited to see this. Great. Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to come to our TAPS webinar. We really appreciate you being here. So kind of moving forward 
to tools for success to really enhance those relationships. We'll be talking about some um, uh, new and updated resources that are available to you as TAPS. So just a reminder of where to find the resources for TAPS. It's on the UC CalFresh website, uccalfresh.org. When you get to the main web page, if you scroll down to the bottom, you can click on the middle square right there where you see where the arrow is to reach the Smarter Lunchrooms of California resource page. That will open up to the next window that you see on your right, and you can click on the Resources tab. Once you click on that, it's going to open up into a window that looks like this. And today, I just wanted to highlight four um, resources that are available to you to use. So the first is the No Time to Train um, workshop resources. I'll go into that more in depth in just a second. <clears throat> the next, we'll be focusing on the videos and webinars, so um, tools to continue training. Uh, we will also be discussing the TAPS Action form, form, which is an updated document. And finally, we'll be talking about the new and updated uh, reporting scorecard tool. So the first thing I wanted to touch on was the No Time to Train. Uh, there was actually a training on this yesterday morning, so if you were able to attend, that, that's great. Um, it comes actually from the Ben Center, and it has 10-minute um, workshops for 11 months out of the year. So each month has a theme, and these are really great um, trainings for food service frontline staff to give them kind of an introduction to Smarter Lunchrooms. It's a great tool for TAPS to use, and it's also a great uh, tool for food service uh, directors and food service managers to use with their staff. All of those resources are available on the TAPS webpage under the folder, the No Time to Train folder. On that, you will find the trainer script, so you can download and print the manual. We also have manuals available for you through Dairy Council and UC Cal Fresh. And then also in that folder are some PowerPoint presentations for the months that require PowerPoint presentations. So all of those resources are already created and available for you to use. The next um, resource I just wanted to highlight, especially if you are new to Smarter Lunchrooms or need a refresher, um, these are both, again, available online under the Webinars and Videos folder. You can click on the No Time or the sorry Two Hour Training Module, which comes from uh, Cornell, and it's a great introductory training to the Smarter Lunchrooms movement principles and practices. And then there's also a separate webinar that is saved under that folder as well, called the Introducing the New Smarter Lunchroom Scorecard. So this is a great resource to become familiar with a Smarter Lunchroom Scorecard and how to utilize that in a lunchroom. Okay, so moving into an, a new and updated resource is the TAPS Action Plan. So it might be a little bit hard to see, but it looks like this. It should look familiar to you because it has been updated from a previous document that was called the Site Visit Summary Report. We changed it to be called the TAPS Action Plan because we felt it was more suited for um, food service staff. So what we've done is we've just made a few changes. We added in a space to highlight the successes that you discover in the lunchrooms to really um, encourage food service to take on smarter lunchrooms. It's important to highlight what they're already doing well. Um, and then there also we added in, based on um, actually what Tracy Conkey developed with her action plan, we added in a next steps table. So that it might be hard to see, but um, within that table you can assign tasks and who's responsible for completing that task, when it needs to be completed by, and notes. So this is a great resource to fill out and give back to food service staff once you've developed your action plan. So the next updated resource is the updated scorecard reporting tool. So as you know, we've kind of taken the um, survey gizmo offline for a little bit to make some updates. And really what we've done is we've made quite a few changes, but the main three changes that we've made is that it's going to be serving three purposes now. Instead of just providing you with, um, or providing the Smarter Lunchrooms of California with a summary of your scorecard assessments, it also will provide you with a summary of your scorecard assessments once you input your data. It will continue to provide the Smarter Lunchrooms of California with a summary of, our, of your scorecard assessments. And then lastly, it actually also captures the changes, the actual changes that TAPS are making in their lunchrooms. So it's not just looking at your scorecard um, changes, but really looking at what was implemented in the lunchroom and what kind of changes did you see. So just a quick table to kind of show you the difference between the old survey and the new survey. The old survey, um, TAPS before had to enter the name of the school, district, the, count, the school district, the county, the school type, and the school demographics. 
We've changed that, so now all you have to do is just enter the CDS code. If you don't know where that is or you have trouble finding it, there are instructions right under, under the um, question in the survey on how to look it up. And then based on that information, we are able to aggregate the data on the school demographic. So that's a pretty helpful new change. Um, previously, we asked you to identify if it was a pre-scorecard, a mid-scorecard, or a post-scorecard. But because we're moving into um, building on multiple years of implementation, we're looking at changing it and having you list the survey number. So if it's your sec second survey that you've entered, you will click number two, and so on and so forth. The third thing is that it used to just collect the data from your current scorecard. The new survey collects data from your current scorecard and data um, based on changes made to Lunchroom since the last scorecard. So it's really kind of giving us a comprehensive view of what you've done in the Lunchroom. Um, additionally, in the old survey, um, TAPS were not able to enter their success stories into the survey. They had to submit a success story separately. We wanted to make it easier for you and combine that into the survey so you can enter success story information and photos into this survey. Um, lastly, previously TAPS did not receive a summary report of the scores. Um, that they had inputted into the data system, now you will receive a summary report of, of all of the information that you put into the survey reporting tool. You will receive an email. So the email looks like this. Um, it will send you an email kind of saying thank you for entering your scorecard and it will have an attachment, a PDF attachment that gives you a summary of everything that you put in. So that's something that you can save for your record. And you can also share that with food service staff. Okay, so looking at what we've collected so far from this last uh, school year, we have a, a lot of really great information that we've aggregated um, based on the old uh, scorecard reporting tool. So what we're working on now is actually aggregating the data so that we can send it back to you. So this is an example of what we're working on now to send out to you in, by October 30th. This, will, this just kind of gives you a summary of the data that you entered. It also shows you if you entered a pre and a post scorecard, it gives you a summary of the percentage point increase, which you can see on the right hand side over here. Um, it, it just gives you kind of a comprehensive view of the changes that you made at that specific school site. And again, this is something that you can share back with your food service um, partners. So looking at all of the data that we've collected over the last year, we've made quite a big impact, and that's all thanks to you. So um, 164 scorecards were entered into the online data reporting tool, which is huge. And in that, we, um, the TAP supported 105 schools. So we have scorecard information for 105 schools throughout the state. We also had 36 entries that had both pre and post scores. So we were able to kind of see what kind of an impact you've had um, over the last year. And if you look at the um, chart below, you'll see the actual impact that you've had based on your information. So looking at focusing on fruit, the score has increased overall by 14% from pre to post. Looking at veggies and salad, it's increased by 10%. Milk has increased by 19%. Entree of the day has increased by 21%. Sales of reimbursable meals has increased by 7%. Signage and, in, and communication has increased by 21%. Student involvement increased by 9%. Um, school recognition has increased by 5%. A la carte has increased by 8%, which leaves us with a total of a 14% increase in overall scores. So again, you, what you're doing is great work. We're extremely impressed and we're excited to see what we'll, we'll get from the new scorecard reporting tool. So, Based on the uh, data that we've collected, we did see some common errors, and I did want to address those now so that you're aware of them moving forward. So the main issue that we ran into is that we had multiple entries for one site visit. So there can be a lot of reasons for that happening. Oftentimes, um, when we collaborate and we work together, we'll have multiple people, multiple taps completing scorecards. And what it looks like happened in the past was that every tap would enter their scorecard information into the data reporting tool. What we're trying to do now to clean up our data is have taps continue to complete scorecards separately, but then determine a, come to a consensus on their score. Um, and that should be the score that you present back to food service, and that should also be the score that you enter into 
the data um, collection tool, which means that we really should only have one tap entering the scorecard information. So it's your responsibility as TAPS to, to select one tap to enter the information into the data collection tool. Um, a, a general rule of thumb is that Dairy Council, if a Dairy Council tap is present, they will be the tap to enter the data into the survey. And there is an option on the new survey to capture if the scorecard was completed with someone from a different agency. So even if a tap is from Dairy Council is entering the scorecard, they can still check that they completed the scorecard with the taps from UC Cal Fresh, for example. Um, so another issue that we ran into is that we were, re were receiving post data from scorecards, but no pre-data. So it's hard for us to kind of see the changes there. So make sure that if you're completing a post scorecard assessment, you also have completed a pre post card assessment and entered that into the system. Um, another issue, issue we ran into was incorrect demographic, da demographic data for the school. Um, and that should no longer be an issue now that we're um, using the CDS code. Um, another issue is that we ran into a lot of partial data entries. So this basically means that people went into the survey, started filling it out, and then stopped. And so we weren't able to capture that data. So we just ask that when you enter your survey information that you take the time to complete the entire survey. Um, and the last issue, not a big issue, but that the total score that was entered um, didn't always match up the um, totals that we calculated based on the um, scores per category. So just double check your math on that. Oh, and going back to looking at the first issue, the multiple entries for one site, is that if we enter one combined score and have a single entry, it's really going back to that collective impact. Okay. Great. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you for making all of those changes to Survey Gizmo. I'm excited to enter in my data, and it just sounds like it's going to be more intuitive. Um, I'm excited also to see what our post assessments will be at the end of the school year for the improvements that we all made, and our hard work can be translated into data and then therefore see the analyses as a whole in the state of California. I'm excited to see that. So on this slide, we are looking at the September monthly nudge. And I just want to encourage you, if you haven't read them, I would highly recommend them. Um, I know that we're all busy working really hard, and so I would hate for you to sit in your office and think, I really need this tool, but it's not available. And then it's just been <laughs> on the monthly nudge waiting for you to look at it. There's things to download. There's certain um, successes and storytelling that we share on these monthly nudges. We will be putting up like September monthly nudge on the healthyeating.org website. So there will be an opportunity for our October monthly nudge to be posted soon as well. Did you make sure that you are um, taking a break? Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, this is your okay, opportunity, this is your opportunity to, go ahead and ask questions. to go ahead and ask questions. Do you have any questions? The conference is okay. muted. Hi everyone, sorry I had to mute everyone. We we're having getting a lot of feedback, so sorry Candice. Um, but if we are now kind of going to open it up to you to ask any questions that you might have, so what we're asking you to do is type your questions into the chat box and we will answer them as we go. So we'll give you a couple of minutes, but we did actually have a question here in the room and that question was, will the training that I mentioned on the No Time to Train manual from yesterday be available online for those who missed it? And that's a really great question. And what I will do is once it's recorded, that webinar should have been recorded, so I will take that video and drop it into the TAPS online resources um, folder for webinars and uh, videos. So that should be available to you soon. So keep checking back on that. You could also sign up for the um, Cornell web webinars, and I think maybe we can send that information out to people so they can get the notice and be part of the actual discussions. I think they do them about once a month. They're only 30 minutes, and they're always recorded, so that could be helpful. Great. So I'll send that out to all of our TAPs. Hopefully this afternoon is information on how to register for the Healthy Food Choices in Schools monthly webinars so you get information. 
So I have a question from Candice that says, Marianne, do you throw out the data is, that is not coordinated? Um, like people who just submit the post assessments. No, we do not throw that data out. We still aggregate it. It's just helpful to have a pre-assessment to compare um, change. And really, we shouldn't be completing post scorecards without completing pre-scorecards because we really want to capture that impact. And that can also come, um, is where uh, taking pre and post photos really come into play. That helps really visualize the impact of the changes that have been made. So thank you, Candace. That's a great question. Any other questions? Go ahead and type them into the box. All right, we have another question. When will the dates and locations for the next training be sent out? That's a great question. So we were talking about the month, the March introductory training. Um, we can send out that information shortly. You should have all the dates based on this webinar, but we can send a follow-up email confirming those dates. Yeah, and usually what we do is we send out some kind of save the date flyer uh, during December or January. We can check with the team. I think by January we usually have the registration links all established and you can actually begin registering. Uh, so that would be good. And those will be added to our monthly nudges as well. So our next question is from Valerie. So could you please review the dates for the SLM funding? I heard that the RFA, oh, SML funding. I heard that the RFAs were coming out in December. Okay, well, the um, RFAs, we're projecting, this is Heather speaking, uh, sending out the Team Nutrition RFA, uh, November 3rd is our target date. And we hope to close the, dead, is the application, so the deadline for the application would be sometime in December 10th, I think is what we're targeting right now. And then in January, we would select the applicants in a, a review process, and then it usually takes us at CDE a couple of months to, um, check on a number of things and encumber the funds and post them. So we imagine we will be awarding the money and encumbering it um, no later than April, but probably by March. So the time period for the funding would start in March of 2016 and extend through June 2017 for the school districts to implement it. Our grant itself is a little bit longer time period because we're administering it. Great. Okay, so Tracy also had a question that says, moving forward with the new online scorecard, should we mark our survey as one or as three, depending on where we are at? Meaning, are we starting fresh with this new scorecard system? So that's a really great question, and the answer is no, we are not starting fresh, because really the scorecards should be building on each other. So if you've already entered one, like a pre and a post, your next scorecard would be your third scorecard. Because what we're going to do when we aggregate that data is we're going to compare from the very first scorecard that you did, what kind of changes did we see? What kind of an increase did we see? So we have a question from David. Comment. Comment from David. The award. Oh, we also <laughs> sorry need to announce that we submitted a proposal for an award for the Let's Get Healthy California Innovation Challenge. So the Smarter Lunchrooms Movement of California submitted a proposal to be awarded that uh, Let's Get Healthy California Innovation Challenge because of all of our work with collaboration and collective impact. Um, so we should be hearing uh, end of November, beginning of December if we were awarded, and we will include that in our monthly nudge. Any other questions? Valerie has one. Oh. How do I find out if a scorecard has already been entered for a school? That's a great question. Um, you should have it in your records, but if you don't, you can always email me or contact me and ask if I have any record of it. Um, we're hoping that now that we're sending out the scorecard summary, uh, results, you can save those in your record so that you can see if you've already entered a scorecard. Um, but if you have questions, go ahead and email me and I'll look up the information for you. And I'll type in my email into the chat box right now. I have a question. For, I thought it was Tracy. 
we spoke about. Tracy, this is Michelle Burns. Just have a question for you uh, regarding you. The conference has been unmuted. You um, mentioned the fuel up to place 60 was uh, for fun. Um, that you got, I think, like $4,000. Just for everybody kind of curious on, I mean, we all want to hear a little bit more about how easy or was that difficult and a little bit about the workload in order to get that funding. Sure, that was a great question. So, um, Fuel to Play 60 funds are available twice a year. Uh, the upcoming deadline is early November. I want to say November 5th. Um, but it might be November 4th, somewhere around there. And, um, and then I think the one after that will be in June. At least that's how it was last year. And so I partnered with, um, it kind of takes a collaborative effort. So um, we had discussions with the principal, assistant principal, with what their goals were. We'd already had conversation about our next steps for smarter lunchrooms. So that was um, kind of an easy shoe-in fit. And um, they actually have a play, uh, I think it's like healthy eating everywhere that's uh, specific to smarter lunchrooms and changing the, the school's meals environment. And then we also um, pulled in the PE teacher. And so Marissa and I, uh, the PE teacher and I, really kind of did the bulk of the work. Um, I did that as a kind of just an extra benefit to the school to take some work off of them because it was towards the end of the year. And so Marissa and I discussed our goals for PE, and she ended up writing that part of the application, and then I took our goals from nutrition, education, and smarter lunchrooms and wrote that part, and then we received approval from uh, the principal before submitting it. So it did take um, some time to uh, submit the application and to make sure that we had a solid um, you know, really strong game plan for implementing what we put into the application. But as far as grants go, I don't think it's that complicated of a grant, and it really doesn't take that much time. I'd say a couple days to put energy towards it, which isn't too bad. Great. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, no, that's great. So, you know, just kind of curious because I think a lot of uh, the TAPs are – you know, trying to get more people involved in this. And I also see that Valerie graciously provided us with Alyssa's um, contact information, which I actually know that she's our uh, main person who can answer a lot of questions around Fuel Up to Play 60. But it's a great opportunity. So thank you for sharing about how that's possible. Great. Sure. It, it really is a good opportunity. And you can potentially put all the funds towards nutrition or you can put some of it towards uh, physical education, physical, physical activity, but at least half of the funds need to go towards nutrition, which is um, either education or meal, you know, meal served at school. Great. Great. So we have another question that came in from Lorena. Will summary results from last year be sent back to our program? Yes. The answer is yes. We are finalizing our summary results, and we will be sending those out by October 30th at the latest. So you can use those in your final reports. So great question. Any other questions? We're ending a bit early, so if you have other questions, we're available. So I'm going to open up the lines in case you wanted to ask The conference has been muted. In case you wanted to ask questions um, over the phone instead of typing them in. The conference has been unmuted. We're hearing some typing, so maybe someone's typing in a question. I have a question. This is Valerie. Regarding the consumption data that you put up, I loved it. Um, did this reflect what the students ate, or did you did you also factor in waste and so forth? Because I know that's a big concern um, for school food service directors currently. So just to clarify, are you asking about the, the scorecard results, or are you asking about Chelsea's information on her Marysville? No, your information. You showed milk went up X percentage, fruits and vegetables, um, overall meal. Um, choices and so forth. So you're talking about this 
the slide. Yes, the bar graph. Exactly. Right. Okay. That's a great question, and I'm sorry that I wasn't more clear. This um, data is just looking at scorecard results. So based on each oh. of those categories, it tells yeah. us how much their score increased from pre to post. Do you also have a, I mean, I couldn't read the other smaller chart of how much the total scores changed. Yes, the total score changed about by 14%. Right, so it's a pretty significant change, but we haven't yet moved into looking at consumption, so that's a really great question. We have another question, or actually an option, if anybody would like to share a success story that they have from their county with developing relationships uh, and building um, partnerships for success. Okay. Looks like you guys are being shy. <laughs> but we have received some really great success stories from you, so the, you, the hard work that you're doing is great. So we're going to move into the um, final slide. Hello. Great. So thank you so much for attending. There will be an evaluation at the end of the webinar, and it is actually specific to this webinar, so please Take the time to fill it out. It shouldn't take you too long. Um, and those results are really helpful for us for uh, moving forward with uh, TAP webinars. Uh, just a quick reminder, the next TAP webinar will be January 21st, 2016. We will be sending out a reminder a couple of weeks beforehand. And it will also be included in our monthly nudges leading up to that. So thank you so much for attending today. We really appreciate you taking the time to be here. And feel free to contact me, Marianne, if you have any questions or you need support, especially with these updated resources. So thank you. Thank you. Bye.